Welcome to the HFY Tales channel. Remember to like and subscribe if you like the story. Enjoy and take care. A Felotion walked into the bar, still in her full ceremonial garb from the ceremony that occurred hours before, clearly annoyed and in need of a drink. The Deloxian bartender blinked, its four eyes one at a time at her, before turning and grabbing a bottle from the top shelf. The bartender was old, older than the station they were on of over a hundred cycles. Still, it recognized the Felotian female for who she was. At seven and a half feet, she was much smaller than the average nine-foot-tall females for their species. Her fur was much thicker than a natural Felotian as well, more adapted to the cold than what is native to their own world. Another sign was her tail. It was much more streamlined than bushy, signaling she was not a full-blooded one, but enough that signs of the crossbreeding would not appear in her children. As the Felotian sat and took the drink without any prompt, she sighed a deep breath, her sharp feline teeth showing in her displeasure. It did not help that the main viewer was showing the shit show that was her cousin's wedding not hours before. Twenty-three dead, over a hundred injured, and worst off her entire wardrobe went up in a fireball to a terrorist attack. It did not help that another Felotian moved to her side. Rough day? The Felotian female knew what the male wanted the moment he started moving toward her. She finished off her drink and signaled for another before turning her attention to less important matters. Leave weakling. The male blinked at her in surprise before doing something he will soon regret. He grabbed her shoulder, near her purity braid, and forced her to face him. Look, I done. Before he could continue, however, she grabbed his wrist, slightly digging her clawed fingers in and twisted his arm away, before taking her other hand and giving him a swift punch into the gut. This caused him to bundle over in pain. As a coup de grace, she punted him in the head while she was still sitting, causing him to fall backwards on his back unconscious. The male's two friends, obvious co-workers in the station maintenance lower caste, were laughing at the show and wondering if he would share, but now knew better, and quietly and meekly took their beaten friend, and took a hastily retreat, either to have him sleep off the injury, or to a med bay to be treated. With that out of the way, the Felotian female turned back to the bar and took another drink. It did not take long before the bar returned to their conversations and merry mood. It did not take an hour before a squad of human marines to come to the bar, telling stories and drinking the place nearly dry. It was a very good profit for the bartender. Then they moved on once one of them mentioned being hungry. A galaxy patron wiggled slightly annoyed, as the universal translator did its job. Those humans are so noisy, I come here for the peace and quiet. Another patron, a burly Dixon, raised his glass to that before finishing the near-gallon-sized drink in one go. I second that. I spend all my shift around filtration systems. I swear I hear their buzzing in my rest cycle. That got a laugh from the others before they returned to their drinks and conversations. You know, I think it's a bunch of mucus what feats they brag about. Oh, sure. I can believe they wrestle a Galaxian while in their combat armor, but naked. This is when the Felotian chimed in. I would not be so sure. The humans have a history of naked wrestling that spans back thousands of years. This caused every auditory sensor in the room to focus on her. Really? And what would a Felotian know of human history? She finished off her drink, and the bartender gave her a knowing smile. I am one-quarter human. My grandfather is one of their scholars. This causes the entire room to go quiet. It is a well-known fact that humans were one of the most proficient crossbreeding species in the galaxy, with over 120 compatible species for it. This includes genetically, ethically, and cultural, and even the act was agreeable between the species. It is also a well-known fact the first two generations, with a human caused them to have some traits pass on before it is flushed from the genome, allowing males of the main species to be born once again. Felotians were just one of their most common partners. A scholar? I know humans are deadly, but I find it hard to believe that any species scholar knows much about martial prowess. The Felotian looked at the new addition to the bar, and even the bartender stiffened at the sight of the towering fifteen-foot-tall giant barely fitting in the entryway. Still without hesitation, a new drink was being prepared as the Felotian shrugged and checked the time. 
All right, as you know, we Felotians tend to follow the path of our parents. So yes, that means I am a scholar as well. In particular, I specialize in history. The bartender smiled even wider as credit started pouring in from the new orders for drinks. For example, do you know why humans are not allowed to start their union hunts until they set foot on Felo? This got the curiosity of the entire room, including the towering new addition. No, well, it is a hundred-cycle-old story. So, I guess it is not that uncommon for most to never have heard it. You see, you know Felotians and humans have been in a partnership since we both entered the galactic stage. But before we did, we met each other. Back then, we called ourselves a warrior race, not a hunter race. You see, our first meeting with another race was each other, galactic neighbors. To keep a long story short, instead of shooting each other up in the void, we challenged them to ceremonial combat. Thinking our superior size and sleeker builds meant for speed would dominate them. There is a reason why it is called the Terran Colossus and not the Fellow Hunt. We lost. There were some chuckles to that and the Felotian pushed her cup away, having enough. Well, speed up to a hundred cycles ago, a Felotian princess entered the Terran Colossus. Did very well. Won it, in fact, the first time we had in over a hundred fifty cycles. She went to look up this fact, and this is when she found her future life partner. You see, the humans do not have strict familial castes. A warrior caste-born can become a diplomat caste. A diplomat caste-born can become an inventor or merchant caste. And so on and so on. They do not have culturally strict castes, at least not anymore. Well, her future life partner, he was born of two different warrior castes. The first, an admiral of the UEDF the other a general of their legendary Spartans. Collectively, the room made the equivalent of a sharp, impressed whistle. Throughout the galaxy, it is well known that if you outnumbered a human Spartan five to one, you did not bring enough bodies. The third son of three, he did not pursue his parents' paths, but instead took on the modest role of historian. That is to say, the princess did not recognize his potential either. But it is his mind that fascinated her and drew her to him more than anything else. So, she remained on Earth for four cycles courting him, and eventually she asked him to be her life partner. Naturally, he agreed even after learning all of my people's obligations to prove himself he is worthy of her, but in turn he asked for something from her equally, if not more demanding. He asked her to perform a human courting ritual called Meet My Parents. There was some laughter from the room, but the bartender merely made a disappointed gesture, knowing full well that was the most scared the princess was in her life. All right, you had your amusing. I am coming up to the point of the story. You see, the Felotian gestured to the viewer that had been repeating the disaster hours ago. A recent update told a story of the monarch leading a hunt and capturing the perpetrators of the terrorist event. We take our union ceremonies for our royal family seriously. Another lesser wave of chuckles occurs. We sent a battle fleet, over twenty warships, to escort the princess and her potential mate home. As soon as they left Earth, his trial had begun. For the first part of the journey, the couple were separated onto separate ships, to prevent any premature youngling making you understand. About halfway on their journey, at a rest station to let their star drives cool, they were attacked by pirates. The ship with the princess was able to escape, but her soon-to-be partners did not. There was a lull in understanding as the room grew quiet. I will not tell you all the details. Those are for those that were there. The Felotian gave the bartender a gentle nod before checking the chime on her wrist unit. With a gentle smile, she took the newly filled drink and downed it before getting up to leave. The bartender did not even comment on how she did not pay for a single drink. It took a few moments to realize she left the patrons without the rest of the story. So, what happened? The bartender collected the Felotian's cup and began to clean it as he spoke up in a deep, gruff, and ancient voice. The princess returned home, believing her future life partner will rejoin her one day. All attention turned to the bartender. Many of the patrons never knew that the bartender could even speak. Three cycles. For three cycles, the human scholar was a slave. Then one day, out of the void, he shows up with a makeshift armada of reclaimed pirate ships and a warp-capable station that they used as their primary base. 
I was born on that station, protected by that human and many others before he led a rebellion on our masters. The bartender then sets the cup down and replaces the expensive bottle to the top shelf. That station was eventually scrapped to make this one. But never have the Ferocians received such a union price. It had shamed all others. This is why humans are forbidden from starting their hunts till after they make it to Felo. The bartender sees another new patron coming and starts preparing a drink when one of patrons asks a question. Why did you not charge her for her drinks? That must have cost you all of today's profits. The bartender smiled and looked at the bottle of drink that indeed cost more than the day's profits, but he had that bottle specifically just for that Felotian's family line. And why should I charge the granddaughter of the man who gave me freedom? The humans have a saying, those that fail to learn from history are doomed to repeat it. I have seen many fails to remember it was the humans that gave us our freedom and sought to abuse their goodwill. Needless to say, they are no longer on this station. For you see, those of us who remember those bloody days when we fight for our freedom know not to fear the humans' warrior caste, despite their steadfastness and ruthlessness, nor their leaders in their unorthodox thinking and cunning. We know to fear their scholars, and for one simple fact, they do not forget 